And that's the story of nearly yielding to despair, only to emerge commanding my drone legally within the grandest kingdom this world has ever known. In this video, I'll be talking about the three steps you need to take in order to pilot your drone legally in the land of the smiles. I'm the Jaunting Ape, and I started this channel to share with you some of the leaps and hurdles I've jumped through as a solo traveler across this beautiful world we live in. Now, regardless of which country you're visiting, it's important to play by the home team's rules, and Thailand is no exception to this. Not following a few simple rules in Thailand could land you up to a million baht fine and up to five years in the slammer. Now listen up and listen good. If the only bars that you plan on frequenting on your upcoming trip to Thailand are the ones that serve world-class mojitos and not the ones with cell doors, then hit that subscribe button and keep on watching this video. Now the first rule you need to follow is correctly registering your drone with the proper Thai authorities. This involves three steps. The first thing you need to do is get liability insurance covering at least one million Thai baht. This insurance is gonna cost you roughly $60 Canadian or 1500 Thai baht. Any drone with a camera, any kind of recording equipment, or if the drone weighs over two kilograms, needs to be registered with two different authorities. First is the NBTC, which is the National Broadcasting Telecommunications Commission, and they register the frequency in which your drone uses to fly. The second is the Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand, or the CAAT. And these fellows, they, uh, well, they register the person who's flying the drone. So we're going to get into that a little later. It's a little complicated and there's quite a few steps to follow, but we'll hop into the boring stuff when I get back to shore. So I built this little paradise in the heart of COVID-19. Uh, little beach. Couldn't do any traveling, so I kind of made my own little travel spot. It uh, helped me get through it. Now, before we get into the actual registration process for the CAAT and the NBTC, there are a handful of rules I'd like to go over. Rules that if broken, could get you into a boar's nest of trouble. The first rule is not to fly anywhere near an airport. Now what's too close? They say nine kilometers is too close to an airport. So when you're flying in places like Koh Samui, any of the islands with airports, it is kind of hard to not break that rule. I'm just gonna say fly with care. Now the second rule is another proximity rule, but this one targets people, buildings, construction zones, so flying over cities and villages is a no-no, and 30 meters within any people, any buildings, that's what's written. Rule number three is line of sight. You must have visual contact with your drone at all times. And this kind of spills into rule number four, which is no flying at night. Drones can only be flown in Thailand during the day, unless you have a special permit. Rule number five involves taking off and landing your drone. Now before taking off or landing, you have to get special permission from the property owner, whether it be private or maybe the hotel grounds that you're staying at. Check with them, I'm sure it's gonna be okay. And if not, don't fly. Rule number six talks about the maximum altitude you can fly at. This is what it looks like. The maximum altitude you can fly at in Thailand is 90 meters without getting any trouble, getting any slaps on the wrist. So if you're still watching along after all that, I must be doing something right, and that probably deserves a like. Go ahead and hit the like button, and while you're doing that, I'm gonna run and get some more wood for the fire. And when I get back, we're gonna go over the steps to registering with the NBTC. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, there are the two different authorities that you have to get your drone registered with. In late 2022, when I started looking into this, you had to get your drone first registered with the NBTC. And this wasn't possible until you landed in Thailand because you had to give them a picture of your passport with the stamp for your visa entry on it. Now this could get done at many of the offices. There's four in Thailand, one in Bangkok. But the thought of me getting into a cab and trying to find an office in Bangkok traffic didn't really appeal to me. And I was getting pretty discouraged with the whole thing. The good news with all of this was that when you did register with the NBTC, it only took a few hours, so you could probably get it done in a day. The bad news was afterwards, you had to register with the CAAT, and the wait there was supposed to be 15 business days. So who knows how long that's gonna be, maybe three weeks? Now for both applications, you're going to need a copy of your passport, including the visa stamp. You're gonna need a picture of your drone, the remote, including serial numbers, 
you're going to have to have proof of address of where you're going to be staying. And, and when I did it, I just used the first hotel that I was staying at. I only had it booked for like two nights, but that worked. And you're going to need a copy of your drone liability insurance. Now, after digging into both authorities and trying to figure out how I'm going to do this, and I started to see that there was language barriers. I was having troubles reading and translating the writing, and I didn't think that things were going to go very well. I was getting very discouraged. I was ready to throw in the towel. I'm going to go to Thailand without a drone. I couldn't imagine starting out my trip stuck in a cab in a Bangkok traffic jam. After 24 hours of traveling, that wasn't appealing to me very much. I watched videos and I read blog after blog, looking over the whole process. And even though they said it sounded easy, it didn't sound easy to me and I was ready to give up. But then when I was looking into drone insurance, I found this one website that said if you bought the insurance from them, they would help you out with the registration. So I sent them an email. They told me, that if I bought the drone insurance from them, they would make it easy for me to get all this put together. And the name of this company is the F-E-I-C. Now this was like being reborn again for me. Suddenly I was motivated again. With them getting back to me within the two days, I bought the drone insurance and the whole back and forth emailing went on about five days and suddenly I was ready. I didn't have to do anything until I got to Thailand. And all I had to do then was when I landed, I sent them a picture right away of my passport with the uh, entry stamp on it. And they got back to me the same day and they said, Mr. Jaunting Ape, all you have to do is wait. And I did. Now, instead of applying with two different forms to two different companies that are two different ways of doing things, language barriers, this company just gives you one sheet. You submit all the information to them they put it all together and they are the middlemen. They take care of everything. All you have to do is wait. Now I arrived to Thailand January 1st of 2023 and I immediately sent them a picture of my passport with the visa entry stamp. They got back to me the same day. They said my application had been sent to CAAT and all I had to do was wait. They told me it'd be 15 business days. By the 15th of January, they had got back to me and it was complete. I was legal to fly in Thailand. But now when I look at their site, it's saying on there that you are able to send in for the CAAT before you get to Thailand. So this could save you days and days. You might be able to get your whole drone paperwork done in a day or two after you land. The NBTC expires when you leave the country or when your visa runs up. If you do a border run, it expires. If you go home, it expires. The CAAT is good for two years. Now I'm going back to Thailand in only a few weeks here and I've already got the ball rolling with the FEIC. They've gotten back to me. I'm gonna be ready to fly my drone within a day or two of when I land in Thailand. So I went from being totally ready to leave the drone at home to, uh, to stumbling across this insurance company that shone new light on the whole thing. And that's the story of nearly yielding to despair, only to emerge commanding my drone legally within the grandest kingdom this world has ever known. If you found this video helpful and would like me to continue making similar content, please leave a comment below. My fellow jaunting apes, the world is yours.